Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Grace. Grace is here to bring God's grace to your life. We want you to know more fully the depth of God's love, His grace, and mercy for you. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are in the midst, you can see on our announcement slide, all that is happening. We're in that season, and we're thankful for it. We're so thankful for the gift of new life in the baptism of Jude. That'll happen in our next service, our late service. So keep Jude in your thoughts and prayers. This coming Wednesday is, uh, is our Thanksgiving Eve worship service at 7 o'clock. Immediately following worship, we're going to gather together for some time of fun and uh, eating some pie. So we're thankful for that. Um, yes. Also, this coming Amen. Wednesday is Gleaners, and so uh, we're a mobile site for Gleaners. You can uh, let people know that they can come by between 1 and 30 to get food. If you'd like to help us uh, with the putting together of the bag so that those that food can be distributed, come about 1230 and plan from about 1230 to 230 of your time, and uh, that would be great. A great student ministry is uh, going to be uh, hosting a chili cook-off. So get those chili recipes ready uh, mm -hmm. on uh, December 29th. That's a Wednesday chili cook-off and winter coat drive. So uh, there's a table uh, on your way out. Uh, you'll get more information as you leave in regards to that. You can see that we have a voters meeting coming. If you take, take the budget for the upcoming 2024 year, it is available for you. As we show God's love, not just talk about it, but demonstrate it in love for our neighbor, thank you so much in your response to the sharing tree. All the gift tags are gone. Uh, just a reminder that those are due in a couple weeks, I think. So be mindful of that. Uh, we're going to be decorating uh, the church sanctuary for Christmas on uh, Friday, December 1st. Normally the gathering area is, is decorated as well. Uh, we're not going to be able to do that because uh, hopefully following December 8th when all the new flooring comes in, in repair of, our, of the flood damage that we had, everything kind of is still upside down. Uh, they're going to be working on the floor, so we won't be able to, to kind of get all of that majorly decorated this year. But in here, we want it to look beautiful, so uh, be ready to help with that. And then as we share God's life, today's the day when we uh, pray a blessing over all the Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes that will be on their way and uh, gifting uh, children across the world not only with the gifts inside, but with the message that goes inside about a Savior who came in love for those children. Uh, and so we're going to say a prayer of blessing over the Christmas child boxes. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to share the life that you give in Jesus, a Savior born to the world in the ministry of these Christmas shoe boxes. We thank you for the heart of those who participated in their love for children and the message of your saving love. Bless every single child who will receive these boxes. May the gospel find its way not only in the smiles but into their hearts as they're gifted with these boxes. Thank you for the opportunity. Go with these boxes, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so before we begin our time of worship, uh, we have, did you let the birthday boy sleep in? Is that what happened? No. Oh, <laughs> understood. <laughs> old man, tell him he's an old man now, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's Rob Horn's birthday today, but uh, Rylan is here today, Rylan. Teenager today, 13. Ryan, happy birthday. He's going to the Lions game, so he asked me to really short sermon as a gift for his... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. Amen, but, Ryan. Let's sing happy birthday to Ryan. Happy birthday, buddy. Here we go.
considering for uh, four weeks, this is our third week, of the living hope that Jesus gives as we face the end. The end of our lives, the end as Jesus promises his return. What is there for us that can hold on to this reality that for you and I, in Christ Jesus, there is no fear in death? And so to speak that truth into our lives today, we're going to be taking a look at Psalm 90. Psalm 90 today. So may God bless our worship today. Let's stand and call our hearts to worship in song. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord, Lord of life, life I, confess I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for, for faithless worrying and for selfish pride, for, for sins, sins of habit and sins of choice, for, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing for our song of praise.
And you may be seated. Let's have the kids come forward for the children's message. Come on up, you guys. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> okay, I want to hear what do you do in the morning? When you wake up, what do you do in the morning? Yes. You get ready for school. What does that mean? Like, finish your homework? A breakfast and get dressed. Okay, good. That's a good thing to get done before school. Anything else? Yeah, what do you do in the morning? You brush your teeth. Good. Yeah, we don't want bad breath. What else do you do in the morning? Yeah, Adam, what do you do in the morning? You, you, you get, you, you, it's your daddy's birthday. Because he has a birthday. It's his daddy's birthday because he has a birthday. Yeah, this morning is his birthday. Good. Okay. Anything else you can think of that you do in the morning? Okay. We're going to hear from the Bible about something that happens in the morning. Every morning. Every single morning. Here's what happens. God's unfailing love is yours. Every morning, along with all the routines, you've got to brush your teeth, you've got to get dressed, you've got to make sure your backpack is packed, you've got to make sure you have your lunch or your lunch money, you've got to make sure you're ready for the bus, you've got to make sure you wish daddy a happy birthday and then bad birthday morning, all these things, brush your teeth, all these things. For me, I've got to put on deodorant every morning because it's bad if I don't. Amen. But every morning, each and every day, God's love is unfailing. He loves you. Every day you wake up, there's his love. Every, every, every day, forever. Isn't that awesome? So add to your list of all the things that's happening in the morning, you could say, I'm, I'm loved. That's what's happening because God loves you each and every morning. And we're going to hear Psalm 90 tell us that. All right? Okay. Are you ready? You can go back to your seats. Thanks for coming up, you guys. Turn our hearts and our minds to God's Word, and Renee is our reader this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading is taken from Psalm chapter 90, verses 1 through 12. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to <clears throat> 70 or 80 if our strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger. Your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. The epistle reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 through 11. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, while people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, 
and those who get drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is taken from Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and, gave f- and gained five bags more. So also, the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have, f- you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you had not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid, and I went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Thanks, Renee. You may be seated. Oh, I did it again. Stay, stay standing. <laughs> I always get thrown off whenever the, with the words of Jesus, and then these last Sundays of the church year, right, it feels really judgy, and I'm not going to speak to, to Matthew, but it says weeping and gnashing of teeth, and then we say this is the gospel of the Lord, and we're thinking, what? <laughs> so... But here's the good news in the gospel. So let's sing it together, the song of the day that frames this series, No Fear in Death, in Christ alone. death. So, a question for you this morning. Are you a morning person? Are you a morning person? 
Right? I, I saw this meme, which is like a picture with a caption in it of this guy looking really haggard and tired, you know, just woke up in the morning, sleep stuff still kind of, probably had bad breath, you know. And the caption of this guy said this, I do not like morning people, or mornings, or people. <laughs> Are you the kind of person, right, that when the morning comes and someone says to you, good morning, you're like, yeah, 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 what is so good about it? Well, I want to convince you today, for those of us in Christ, as Christians gather together today, that we are all morning people. As we heard the first 12 verses read this morning, I want to share with you verse 14 of Psalm 90. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love. Psalm 90 is the only psalm that we know to be written by Moses. There's 150 psalms in the Bible, in that book, in the Bible that we call psalms. There's 150 psalms. Only one of them is written by Moses, and it's Psalm 90. And it's here in this psalm that he shares something of his heart and life. And it brings this psalm to life. You hear that it's... You, you can sense that this is written towards the end of his life. He's in his twilight years. And he's looking back and considering how sh short life is. It goes by so fast. Moses, at this point, too, is dealing with grief. His sister Miriam, who was always cheering him on, has died. Shortly after his sister Miriam died, his brother, who was always kind of co-leading, was, was speaking, was helping, Aaron has died as well. So his heart is grieving. He has lived through the wilderness wanderings. And he has seen with his own eyes the disobedience, the disruption, the turning away, the mutiny against God himself by God's people. And as a result of that disobedience and sin, he has seen the temporal judgment and wrath of God upon them. God's anger he's seen. And as a result of all of that wilderness wanderings, he, you get this sense that he is a man without a home. And that's all underneath each and every word of this song. It feels like, doesn't it, that we can relate with the troubled realities that Moses encountered? I mean, it doesn't take much for us to realize and to live with the truth that life is short. It can be fragile and so very frail. We, too, grieve the death of people that we love that was all, were, were always there by our side, cheering us on. And we miss them. And our hearts ache. We too know the wilderness wandings reality. Our hearts prone to wander, to leave, to turn, to disobey, to sin against our God. And the disruption and the disconnection that that wilderness wanderings brings to our lives. We, like Moses, know what it is to suffer, to hurt. And in the midst of all of that, 
we have these beautiful words spoken from the heart of Moses in the midst of his last days into our life in these last days. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love. That in the depth of his heart and life, which seemed to be emptied out, that there was something to satisfy that ache, the unfailing love of his God. It's interesting that the word here, satisfy, this is a word that is used to when a person is feeling hungry and has gone without food. The tumbly is rumbly. And, and you're satisfied. You're filled up with food. That's the picture. And remember... <laughs> A people in the wilderness for all those years without any food, hungry. And God gifts his people with bread from heaven, manna, each and every day, without fail. God satisfying the hunger of his people with manna, this sweet, sweet gift of food. And remember, right, when that food came. For the people in the wilderness, it came every morning. Every morning. Day after day after day. And Moses is relying for his own soul and mind and body in the empty realities of suffering and death and how temporal and frail life is, that there is an unfailing love that comes to him every morning, every day, without fail. And so it is, generation after generation after generation for God's children. In fact, many generations had passed. Generation after generation after generation, and there God's people are sitting out on a hill in the middle of nowhere, hungry. And in John chapter 6, there is Jesus, and he feeds them. And as these 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 children of God gathered to hear Jesus are fed by him, Jesus would go on to say that there is a satisfaction that goes deeper than just a good lunch, than just, for me, a nice warm piece of pizza, or two, or three, or if I'm going to really be satisfied, four. That there's something more than that. In fact, Jesus would say, I am the living bread. A living bread that will never spoil. And all those who receive this living bread will have life. And then, as the gospel writers would continue to speak about Jesus and who he is as the one who gives and sustains, satisfies life. They want you to know that there is one morning, one morning. They make sure of everything that you know that what happens on this particular day, it's morning, over and over. They go way out of your way to make it crystal clear that this day, what's happening? It's morning, it's morning, it's morning. What's the day? The day of Jesus' resurrection. When he comes back to life after dying on the cross, 
That's the morning of mornings. And so it is for you and for me. That our lives are filled up with the living Savior who gives a love that will not fail. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe. This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on the cross, when Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. On him was every, on him was every sin was laid. It's here in the death of Christ that we live. And that Savior who satisfies all the righteous requirements that God would have by His life given for you, on the morning raises up from the grave to declare victory so that for you and for me there is no fear in death. Jesus lives. And so will all those who trust in Him. Now I want you to picture a moment. It's going to happen, I hope, in a few days. It's the moment right after your Thanksgiving meal. <laughs> and you are so satisfied. And you kind of push away from the table. For me, I always undo my belt. <laughs> or I put on sweatpants. Those two things. <laughs> I recline, watch a little football, Take a little nap. You hear family kind of around. I pray that for you. But if that's not going to be your Thanksgiving, I want you to think of a time when that was real. Because this is a picture of the fullness of what God gives. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, filled to the full. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I stand. You see, every day of your short life, day after day after day, it begins with the morning, and with that morning comes an unfailing love. Thanks be to God. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand and confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker, maker of, heaven of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of her last. Amen. You may be seated as we bring our blessings before our God in a time of offering. Thanks, Kevin. Let's pray. Lord, we bring back to you this morning just a portion of what 
you have blessed us with. Would you use these, our offerings, that we at Grace might be a blessing to the people around us, in our family, to our community, and for our world, that others might know of your unfailing love. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now it's time we come before our Lord in a time of prayer, and we have some uh, folks that have asked for an extra measure of God's blessing, and for us to certainly remember them in our prayers. We're going to be remembering with joy and thanksgiving Jude David Rusk. Uh, at the 11 o'clock service, he'll be baptized into the family of God, and we pray that as he grows, that he will receive God's word and trust in the Lord for all. We're also going to be rem remembering uh, Chris, sister of Kelly Compton. Uh, Chris is home from the hospital, so we pray for a, a prayer of thanksgiving for that and that she would continue to heal. And we're playing, praying for Dana, who's a friend of Susan Williams. Uh, she is in some personal struggle right now. So we pray for God to give uh, Dana uh, clarity of mind and peace in her struggles. We're also praying for Betty Britz. Uh, she's the aunt of Susan Williams and she is facing surgery. Uh, we pray certainly for the surgical team that will care for her. We pray that surgery would go well and recuperation would go swift. We're also praying a prayer of thanksgiving for our veterans who have fought and died to keep us free. So we offer an extra measure of prayer for those who have given their lives so that we might be free. So with that, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, we come before you just as we are, stained by sin. Enter not into judgment with us, for no one living is righteous before you. Have mercy on all who are haunted by guilt and shame. Let your Holy Spirit fill them with a the knowledge of your grace and holiness and make their hearts ready to receive the gift of salvation that you give them in Christ Jesus. Father, teach us to do your will, for you are our God. Strengthen pastors to meditate on all you have done and proclaim your word in its truth and purity. Let your good spirit lead us on level ground standing holy and righteous before you through Christ Jesus. Father in heaven, you have made us children of the light and of the day. Bless our homes, especially parents, as they teach their children your ways, that your people may walk as those armored in faith, love, and salvation. Holy God, grant repentance in our land, that our laws may be just, our transactions honest, and our love for others fervent. And Father, we now offer up prayers for those in the Middle East, especially for the people of Israel, for the innocent victims in Palestine, and for those in the Ukraine as these wars and skirmishes uh, carry on. Father, we ask that you would stretch out your mighty arm and that you would bring an end to the war and bring peace to the land. Father, be with those who have lost family members in this war. We pray that uh, you would be with them and that you would comfort them. Almighty God, we give ear to our pleas on behalf of the afflicted. We're including in our prayers this morning uh, Chris, Dana, Betty Britz. And Father, we offer up a prayer of thanksgiving also for the new gift of life and Jude, David, and in uh, Chris, that her healing is good and that she is home. So Father, we now remember those also that we name in our hearts. For your name's sake, preserve their life. Grant them healing according to your will. In your righteousness, strengthen their faith through all trials that this life may bring. Holy God, you have not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Until the day of his coming in glory, grant that we may welcome him at the altar, 
even as we are welcome to him, receiving the gift of forgiveness through his body and blood. God of life, your son died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Receive our thanks for your kindness to all who have died in the faith. Comfort those who mourn with the consolation that all who die in Christ will live with him forever. God of grace, preserve us from the temptation to consider you a hard and unmerciful master. Keep us mindful that you give us every good gift in abundance, and most of all, a place in your household. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let's join together in a prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's remain standing for our closing song.
we leave this place, if anybody would like intercessory prayer, uh, Terry Bauer, our deacon, will be up by the baptismal font. Please come forward and he'll pray with you or for you. And if you're uncomfortable with that, stay at your seat and he will come to you. So with that, let's go forward with God's blessing and benediction. Lord, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everybody.